Disclaimer, I had no idea who this was until yesterday. <laughs> There's been all this talk recently of like drama in the anti-MLM community and I'm just like, what community? <laughs> Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel. Today it's an impromptu video based on something that happened yesterday. Basically yesterday uh, uh, an influencer, a popular influencer, posted to Instagram that she is joining Monat. That's always interesting because the way that influencers use their influence is important in my opinion and very interesting to see different perspectives on how that should be used, but it's extra interesting because this is somebody who formerly posted anti-MLM content. So there's been a lot of backlash, a lot of fans are very disappointed. After I read her post I felt like I had to look into her and respond because again I think that it's very important to look at influencers and how they use that influence, but also there are a couple of things that I think warrant genuine critiques, criticism. There are a couple of things that she does that I wholeheartedly disagree with. A lot of it I think is we have a very different perspective on certain things, probably based on our backgrounds. I'm just going to tell you a bit about her and provide sort of context leading up to this post and everything that sort of happened and the things that I disagree with, and then we'll go through the post where she talks about joining Monat and we'll go through that. I'll put time codes in the description and try and split the video into segments, but I'll just put like a, I'll give you like a TLDR now in case you can't be bothered to watch the rest of the video. I think there's a couple of interesting perspectives to come out of this. I think that I've only looked into this woman's recent content. I don't know, she removed her anti-MLM videos, so I, I can't say personally what they were like, whether I agree with her descriptions of them now. I think that for, for fans and people in the community, I would say don't be afraid to call out things that you don't agree with, but also if you enjoy somebody's content and they do one thing that you disagree with, be open to calling that out, follow your moral stance wherever it takes you. If you don't want to watch that person anymore, then go right ahead. That's absolutely fine. It's also fine if you want to carry on watching them. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's a hard life and there's nothing watching somebody's other content because you enjoy them and you vibe with that person when you are anti-MLM and they are in an MLM. It's not the end of the world. Nobody's gonna... No realistic, sensible person is gonna blame you or judge you for that. I think you're perfectly valid if you want to carry on watching this person's content, maybe avoid the MLM stuff or just see what she has to say. But also, yeah, don't be afraid to... In these kind of communities, we know, especially in MLMs, it's very easy to be dubbed a hater. Don't be afraid to provide valid criticism. You can be a fan of somebody and point out something that you don't agree with, right? My whole thing, if you've watched any of my other videos and you know this to be true, we condemn the actions, not the person. And the flip side of this then for Kimberley would be, to, to her I would say, don't take criticism of actions as personal offence. A big thing that she sort of talks about and when she talks about her old videos and why she removed them and stuff is because she felt that she was being very judgmental and she shouldn't judge people by the business they're in and so forth. I think that's absolutely true, but I think she makes the mistake of conflating criticism with hate. We'll go through a couple of examples where you can really see this, but she, she definitely has a defensive attitude towards negative comments where she'll say that people are being horrible and mean to her, and then the comment she shows is somebody saying, I don't support this business or something like that. It's hard to do, it's a learning curve, but especially if your entire business is going to be through social media, try your best not to conflate those two things, right? Criticism isn't hatred. So I have kind of, a, I guess, a rounded opinion on this. Uh, I think that this is a good person who I fundamentally disagree with on lots of important things. And I think the whole thing is really fascinating, so we're going to talk about it. So yeah, we're talking about a woman called Kimberley. She is uh, an entrepreneur, and a, a business advisor. She's trained as sort of a, a life coach, personal personal coach, uh, and she's got a lot of experience in business, so what she does is teach people to make money. She makes money teaching people to make money. There's a lot of these. I have kind of mixed feelings on these sort of people. I mean, usually the advice is relatively legit. I think especially from Kimberley, it's fair to say that she is quite honest, I think, about the ways that she makes money. I just want to, like, lay this down more for myself than for viewers, I guess, but like a lot of this stuff I find hard to understand and certain decisions that she makes and things that she says I find hard to understand, but I have to remember that this is an influencer who makes her money social marketing in LA. 
which is and 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 therefore she has a very different perspective on money and influence than a uh, sort of slightly hippie leaning lefty liberal in london good alliteration but yeah our our um our perspectives on money and ethics differ somewhat i i genuinely don't think she's a bad person I just think that we have very different opinions on what's important in certain cases. So I went to her YouTube to see what kind of content she'd been making, um, and I wanted to see if she'd addressed joining Monat on her YouTube channel. She hadn't yet, like I say, this was only yesterday that the post came up, but YouTube would be a great place for her to market, so I'd be surprised if she didn't talk about Monat on there at some point. My eye was drawn by very effective titling to how to make money from home, zero to thousands, I'm sorry, capital letters, zero to thousands a month. If you're new here, <laughs> I read capitalization as though it's shouting. That's just how, that's how I read. If you, if you put a comment in capital letters, I will read it as though you're shouting. Uh, so have fun with that if you like. <laughs> this kind of title, I just, this is what I don't like about these kind of money advisors, because that title obviously really implies that by following whatever the steps she outlines, you can make thousands a month from home. From, from starting at nothing. I will say that her actual advice is based seemingly on real experiences and is pretty legit. She is very good at, she, she'll post her real statistics and figures and things, which I think is really good, especially especially in, in MLM, you so often see like doctored financial information and kind of suggested financial information. I think it's really good that as a person who talks about streams of income, she is very open about how many views she got this month uh, how much money this and that income stream made and why. So that's, I think, a really good thing. Unfortunately now, because I've watched these videos, I get loads of adverts from different people telling me how to make money from home. I think it's good as well that in this video and in some of her other content, she points out that she seems to care about the influence she has enough to point out when things are scams and dodgy money-making schemes. So I think that that's another really good thing to do. I just think that it's such a shame to see that and then she joined Monat, <laughs> you know? So I do want to just draw attention to this this make money from home video. So remember I watched this yesterday uh, for the first time and it was at this point that I was kind of shaken enough to be like, okay I have to make a video about this woman. This was the catalyst for me. I'm really surprised. There's been so much backlash. I'm not surprised that there's been backlash about her having made anti-MLM content and then joining Monat, but I'm surprised that there's been that much backlash for that and seemingly no backlash for what she does in this video. This was a live stream, okay? I'm flicking through the start and I'm watching the repl replay of the live chat and I'm seeing all the comments pretty much asking if she knows what's happened. Has she seen the news? Is it really the appropriate time to make this? And what's happening is rioters are breaking into capital at this exact moment. The fact that there are people asking what's going on in the news means that we're in the more sort of shocking early stages, I believe. There are people at this exact moment here trying to undermine democracy by storming Congress. People's lives are at risk. It's it, it's a scary moment, right? The world over, but especially surely if you're in the US. Like at this point in time, at this exact point in time, I was glued to the news. I was watching the news for like four hours in a row because it was so shocking and worrying. And I'm not American. <laughs> Handle crises however you have to. Like if you can't listen to the news, it's too stressful. Make a cup of tea, get under a blanket, look after yourself that's completely fine. Do whatever you have to. But to be so callous as to know what's happening in DC at the moment, what's threatening your own democracy right now, and to carry on making go from zero to thousands of dollars a month live stream, that just seems so callous to me. She's kind of rude to the people in her comments. She calls out negative comments and I just this is where we start to see her kind of defensive attitude I think yeah I know what's happening on the news but okay this is the point where she this is the point where she reads the comments uh talking about what's going on in DC at the moment her face when she reads the comments goes from like yeah yeah financial advice to <sighs> pretty much 
yeah, I know what's happening on the news, but I can't change it and I'm here to help you. So if you are, you know, saddened and affected by that, by all means, don't watch this video and spend your time there. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what you want me to do. You don't have to be here. I understand that. But this is going to be an evergreen video on my channel and this is what I'm doing today and I scheduled it and I'm a woman of my word. So why you should be listening to me. So that's her entire, that's her response to doing this money-making live stream while the Capitol riots are happening. I just, it just comes across as callous and defensive to me. It's like, yeah, I know this is happening, but I can't do anything about it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. I've said that I'm going to do it, so I'm going to do it. I'm a woman of my word. Nobody would criticise you if you were like, hey, something really serious is going on in my country right now. I'm going to postpone to tomorrow. Find me at this time. Nobody would criticise you. And surely, like I say, from a business perspective, you would get more people watching your live stream then because you're losing all the people that are like focused on the news and what's actually going on in the world right now. I think that's a really weird way to behave. I get, and I, I wouldn't do it. When I'm talking about streams of income, I am going to be talking about multi-level marketing. Here we go. So it is a stream of income. You may not agree with it. That's fine. No one is ever forcing you to do anything. And if they are, you need to figure out who can help you get out of that situation. Um, no one should be forcing you to do anything. And along the same... So, okay. It is a stream of income for and she she must have done enough to have made anti-mlm content in the past she must have done enough research to know that it's a stream of income for an incredibly small percentage it's an investment risk for most which she hasn't in any of the content i've seen where she's mentioned mlm she's not mentioned that at all and i think that's really important it's an investment risk okay she says so she says no one should force you to do anything. Nobody is for nobody is forcing anyone into an MLM. At the point where people are forcing you into doing things, you're in a cult, right? It's not about people being fought. That's that's just an unrelated point, right? That doesn't that doesn't mean anything in this situation. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, nobody should force you into doing anything. No, they shouldn't. And you don't have to be here if you don't want to watch that kind of thing. Again, that doesn't mean anything. As an influencer, people who don't know, people who haven't done the research and they don't know to be for or against something, they're going to watch your content and they're going to be influenced by it. That is what being an influencer is, right? The hair's starting to happen. It's the more, uh, the more excitable I get when I'm recording, the crazier my hair becomes. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Yes, I mean, true, but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't stop any potential damage when you advertise MLM as a stream of income when you know it's not a viable stream of income most of the time and it's actually an investment risk. So that's one thing. There are millions of women and men who find a lot of value in multi-level marketing. We have a really good friend that has a three or four restaurants now and he started with Cutco and he learned a lot of really amazing things that helped him throughout his business. So this is another thing that I consider somewhat irrelevant, again. I've talked about this before, and actually whenever I am speaking to somebody who used to be in an MLM, I encourage them to also share the good things. Don't be afraid to have gained good experiences, because you can be anywhere doing anything in any sh shitty situation and still take value from something, you can still learn. You could even be one of the people making money from these schemes. And I guess where Kimberlea stands is that that's good enough. Where I stand is that we acknowledge that by being that money-making person in that scheme, you are hurting somebody else and putting somebody else at risk. And that's why I stand against it. And so that doesn't change anything. The fact that you know people who have had good experiences, especially, like I say, she's an influencer in LA, she is probably way more likely to know people who are doing well, who have done well in these schemes than most of us normal people. It doesn't change anything. The fact that people have good experiences and get good things out of being in an MLM doesn't change the fact that the companies themselves are predatory, that the business model doesn't work, that the <laughs> recruitment structure is a mirror of a pyramid scheme. 
it doesn't change anything about that. It's kind of, it's redundant, again. That I do see it as a stream of income. Like it or not, it is a stream of income. So yeah, one of the other things she says, and I'm not sure if she said it in this video and I've just skimmed past it, or if she says it in a different video, but she says, it's a legal stream of income and therefore I'm going to talk about it. There's nothing incorrect about that. You can't fault anything that she said as being not factual, but I think she skips a lot of important information about the risks, like I say. It, it, it can potentially be a stream of income, that is true, but it can be a, a stream of income for a, a very tiny minority, and even that minority usually don't make very much off of it. Like, they would, if they put the same hours into actually having a part-time job, they would make more money is usually the case, right? And you tend to see figures from sales and not from actual net income. Based on what she says at the end of this stream, remember this is before she... this is before she joined Monat, but at this point she is using Monat products. She started using the Monat products in April, so I think it's really interesting to keep that in mind and see how she's kind of subtly pushing more and more this pro MLM income stream, and I feel like because I know this in hindsight and I'm watching these with that information, I feel like I can see her prepping to potentially become a market rep, which obviously we know that she does. I do think that Kimberlea could be a real force for good within the MLM community, uh, and here's why. She is aware from her past research, she acknowledges this, she is aware of the many unethical practices of reps, um, and she's open about that and open and planning to make content, according to this video, on those things and how to get out of bad situations. As an influencer with a likeable personality who clearly displays a moral standard, again, it's, it's different from my moral standard, but she definitely has a line that she won't cross um, and, and she has her own business ethics. I think that if she was speaking directly to people already in an MLM, she could definitely help curb some of the more negative behaviours and be really, really helpful. She definitely has a line she won't cross. It's it's just in a different place than mine. Um, but she's also an Amazon affiliate, and that's not super ethically sound either. But it is a legal, <laughs> it is a legal income stream. But at this point, there's not much I would criticise her for as a person. I really disagree with, again, her doing this live stream at this time anyway. I think she should have postponed. We just have different opinions. I also wouldn't promote any MLM, obviously, uh, even if I was re recommending performing ethically, because I know, as does she, that the companies themselves employ predatory tactics and skirt as close to the law. She talks about them being legal, but they, they skirt as close to the law as they can in order to make as much money as possible, and, and legal doesn't mean moral. Legal and ethical are not... there's, there's no direct equivalent there. Monat is also an example of a company whose products are way overpriced compared to their competitors to compensate for the business structure. Like it or not, it's a stream of income, she says. Yeah, it is. So is puppy farming. Obviously that's an exaggeration of being in an MLM, but the point is, just because it's a stream of income, like I said, it's a valid stream of income for so few people that it's almost inconsequential as something you should recommend. Um, just because it's technically a stream of income does not mean you have to recommend it. This makes more sense to me, though, in hindsight, knowing that she was going to join Monat, because the logical thing to do otherwise would be to just not talk about it at all, right? If her thing was legitimately that she felt that she had been overly judgmental and, and mean, and as a result she didn't want to speak against it anymore, that would be totally cool and understandable. The truth is she was probably considering joining at this point, and she has a lot of work to do, backtracking things she's said in the past, and pushing enough of a pro MLM agenda to get those people on board. I'm not going to play the next video because it's just a sort of casual vlog, she talks about her income goals, and shows a lot of financial figures, and I flicked through because she talked a bit about MLM reps. Um, incidentally, she started at this point referring to MLM way more as network marketing, which is something that MLM reps do, uh, because the word has such negative con connotations now. But I thought I would share this from the video description because it's kind of funny and kind of interesting to keep in mind while you're reading the later stuff that she says. Um, she's talking about how much money I'm truly making and my goals, and I think she means plans here, but it says planned, uh, my goals and plans to get to $100,000 this year, no matter what. Again, shouting, no matter what, no matter how unethical the company I join and how hard I have to U-turn on the content I've made. Her latest video, 
then is about do's and don'ts for network marketing. I'm not really going to go massively into it. I'm just going to uh, highlight something I found that kind of rustles my jimmies in many of her replies to comments. And you can see this here and on Instagram as well. It's this empowering women, right? She keeps talking about how by going pro MLM, she's empowering and uplifting women, which is exactly an MLM company tactic, and I hate it. I recommend that people don't join these companies, not because I'm tearing women down, because I want to protect people, because I care about people. I care about the women being taken advantage of, and I would rather have an unpopular opinion that there isn't just being nicey-nice, people should do whatever they want. Uh, I'm going to call out companies which are unethical, and I'm not going to let their abuse of female empowerment stop me. I think it's more empowering to say to women, you deserve better. She definitely has this attitude of like, I'm not accountable for what business people choose to be in, but as an influencer, she has the power to tell people about companies that are unethical, and she chooses not to in favour of making 100k this year. She pretty much says several times in the content that we've been going through that if it's a legal stream of income, she doesn't care what it is, even if it's unethical. So we've, I, I guess we've gone through this already, I just need to uh, get over it. Yeah, this is another, just another example of Kimberlea being weirdly defensive around her comments. They actually spend time going to my posts on my business Instagram, clicking on anyone who tagged my brand that bought something from me, that's happy with their purchase, DM them and tell them, I'm a horrible person, this person's never even met me before. So, so this is, um, an anti MLM are commenting on a customer's Instagram photo my company is tagged in, right? So this isn't even on a post of hers that she's getting super defensive about. What she's saying is that people are being horrible to her. People are going out of their way to hurt her. What the comment she puts up actually says is, let's not support this business. That is so, that is like the most polite hate comment I've ever seen. People should be free to politely disagree with you. People should be free to impolitely disagree with you. And they are, and you have to live with that. You can handle it how you want, but if you never take any criticism and you put it all down as just people being horrible, you're never gonna learn anything. <laughs> you're never gonna experience other perspectives which she talked about wanting to do before. It's not tearing women down. It's not a personal insult to you. Kimberlea to say that Monat, for example, is unethical and people shouldn't support it. That's not, that's not a personal insult. People can still like you and like your content and also say that. It doesn't mean that you have to, it doesn't mean that you can't be friends, it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy each other's content, it doesn't mean somebody is going out of their way to hate on you because they say we shouldn't support this business. What if, even if you completely disagree, it's not a, it's not a personal insult. So that's all of her latest stuff for context. Let's move on to the Instagram post from yesterday. Here we are. So side note, in her video about her financial goals, she said she was going to work on taking more professional photos for Instagram and, and places every day. And uh, this photo looks great. $6,541.86. That's how much money I made off YouTube videos humiliating, hurting, judging, bullying, and belittling women and showcasing at Monat Official in a negative way. And that's how much money I intend on paying back. I didn't watch her anti-MLM content. Like I say, I had no idea who she was until yesterday. If she really was belittling people and being judgmental, that does suck. And I appreciate her being honest and open about having made stuff that she's not proud of. I do think it's worth noting one more time that highlighting a bad company is not bullying. We can be kind and understanding and also point out when someone does something bad takes advantage of people, so on. I wish I could simply write a check to Monat for that amount, but as they say, my money is all tied up. Worse yet, once I stopped creating that type of content, I had to start from the bottom again so I can't afford it. Therefore, I decided I'll work it off being a market partner. She wishes that she could write a check to Monat. First of all, I don't think Monat needs that money. Second, if the problem really genuinely was that she was being unkind to specific women, surely they are the ones she should be paying? What she said in her other content is that she's not going to judge someone working, working for an unethical business, but here is her openly supporting what we know is an unethical company, and she is... Take a shot every time I say unethical in this video. She is now being pro-company and not just non-judgmental of person in the company. So there's, again, she's kind of conflating these two things as though they are the same, and by saying she's not... She's kind of painting herself as as the 
the patron the patron saint of being kind to people regardless of what job they're in when in reality she is she is pro the business the unethical business and is joining the unethical business and she wishes she could pay money to the business not the women that she hurt i think that what her actual intentions and feelings are is ever so slightly different than what she kind of presents them as basically once she stopped making popular content she stopped making money so she's going to monat for her new income stream and we know from her videos by the way that her goal is to make 100k this year so monat is just part of the way she's doing that shocking most of you know I've been using Monat since April, and my close friends know it's all I use on my hair now. To my surprise, it actually works. I share what I love. Monat works on her hair. It's not about the products. Even if Monat is perfectly fine, it's definitely more expensive than most similar products. But it's the business model and the company that's unethical. I know she doesn't care. We've established that multiple times, that the ethics of the company don't matter to her if it's a legal income stream. But I feel like I have to bring this up, because her going this route kind of undermines the entire point of being anti-MLM. She's painting being anti-MLM as being rude and judgmental of people. The majority of people will condemn the action in the company and not the person. So I think it's it, it definitely harms any anti-MLM movement. The anti-MLM period of my life is the period where I was horrible, and now where I'm a much better person, I'm promoting one act. This is my decision. Not even my closest friends and family know I'm doing this. I did not want anyone to influence me. Here are some reasons why, and I hope you'll follow me on this crazy journey. That is so, like, MLM playbook. <sighs> cringy. I'm sorry. That is cringy. Because I'll be sharing my struggles and successes every step of the way, but I vow to put all I've learned and reprimanded... Reprimanded? Rep all I've learned and reprimanded on into practice. I'm not sure what that means. If you're already upset, mad, wanting to rip my head off, please feel free to leave because I never want to be the reason your blood pressure is high. It's again this, if you don't like it, just leave. The world is not made up of people who support you and people who want to rip your head off. There are plenty of people, most people I would argue are in the middle, who are sort of, you know, that they either don't know you enough and are sort of ambivalent to your existence but don't support your business, or people who like you but don't support that business. There's plenty of people in the grey area in the middle. I don't know why she's so black and white about negative feedback. One, I've never worked an MLM business, yet I ran my mouth like an expert, eat my words. I've never sold meth, and yet I would quite comfortably continue to stand against it. The point is null. It's like, I've never been under a dictatorship. I'd still fight against it happening. You can know something is bad without having experienced it directly. Two is the exact same point, just personalised. I have to try things myself. Sorry. I have to try things myself and learn from my own experiences to know the truth. Oh, that audio is peaking. <laughs> no matter how many times I hear other people's advice, it doesn't stick unless I do it. So that's basically the same thing, but from her personal perspective. She can't understand anything. She says she's unable to understand something unless she's experienced it directly. I just, with the power of research and listening and empathy, you don't need to experience everything in the world to have a moral stance on it. You just don't. That's just, that's just silly. It's a, it's a strange way. Again, it's a personal thing. In this case, it's a personalised thing. She says, I can't do X, Y, or Z. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it would be a great excuse to join whatever financial scam you wanted. But it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. You don't you don't need to experience something to have a moral stance on it. That's just silly. Three, when I was in a dark moment a few months ago and people I thought were my friends turned against me, made hate videos about me, lied about me to weaken my influence that took me a decade to build, reached out to customers of mine and told them not to buy from my company, people in Monat who I'd actually hurt and I never expected to be kind for me were there. And then she tags a couple of people. When people were mean to me, some Monat reps were nice to me. I'm sure it's full of lovely people. There's, it's not the people that are the problem. It's not about them, it's about the business. I judge someone on the content of their character and not what business they are in. Everyone is different. Sarah never once asked me to join her team or buy anything. She just, I just, I think it's interesting. <laughs> and like, I feel like it, um, the, the fact that she calls Monat a business in quotation marks and refers to her team in quotation marks is kind of telling. Um, she just listened and even if she never calls me one, I see her as a friend. That's a weird thing to say. So and so told me not to quit educating on business, even though I made fun of her, she learned from me so you can thank her. 
Hashtag Monat. So she judges people on character and not what business they're in. One more time for the people in the back. It is not bullying. It is not judgmental to criticise a company for being unethical and to tell people that you choose not to support it. Yes, don't judge people based on just their job. Obviously, you should consider people as a whole and by what they say and do. You should absolutely condemn actions that might put people at risk, like becoming a rep for a company that employs predatory tactics and is an extremely risky investment that very rarely pays out when you are somebody who gives people business advice. This might be a good time to highlight Monat's 2019 income disclosure, which puts the median average earnings of market partners, median incidentally, maths break, math, math break, uh, medium, I feel like I should be using my whiteboard. <laughs> average takes every value in a list of numbers and adds them together and divides by how many items there are in the list. So average takes advantage of outliers. So if you have a couple of very high figures that will skew the data. Median is better at ignoring those outliers, that's why I'm using the median in this case because it's been provided. Median is just, it lists all of the numbers in a list in order, the median is literally the number in the middle. But both are valid and useful, that's why I'm saying median. Maths break over, annual earnings of market partners, 93% of the company incidentally are that bottom level market partner, their median annual earnings are $31 a year, not including any expenses, lots of potential expenses highlighted in the small print underneath the income disclosure, incidentally. Since the cheapest product kit, the starter kit, costs $99, we can say quite comfortably that it's very unlikely for a person who joins now to make any money. We know that one of the primary ways to make income from Monat is through residual income from your downline, that promotes recruitment. There's also a recruitment bonus in Monat, but it's not very good, so it's not really it's kind of moot. The highest income potential from Monat, which again we know that is what Kimberly is driven by, uh, is by having a large team of salespeople underneath you. Maybe she won't recruit. It would be it would be really interesting and great if she didn't. It's not yet clear what her ambitions with Monat are. This is the only information we have so far. We just know that she likes the products and has become a market partner. Even if she does exclusively sell the products and doesn't recruit and is open about the company, she still has a big influence and specifically by taking only glamorous professional photos and demonstrating a certain lifestyle, people will absolutely be drawn to the company anyway, especially because they respect her as a, a, essentially a financial advisor. I think this is a mistake. I don't think it's the end of the world. It contradicts with my personal ethics, definitely, but I really think we have to wait and see what comes from this. I would love, love, love to see exclusively ethical practices from her. I'd love if when people ask her about the business, she highlights the risks. So far in her pro MLM stuff, she's been very non-committal. Talking about MLM as an income stream, she's not highlighted the risks. She's not mentioned that it is only an income stream for a very small amount of people. It would be great if she started doing that as well as pointing out bad business practices. It could be okay. In my opinion, I don't think it's ever good to promote an unethical company especially with the frequency that you need to, to be an active market partner. I don't think that's a good way to use your influence personally, but time will tell what the result is and um, how this influencer markets herself. I have a feeling this could be great for the MLM community, or it could be really bad. <laughs> Long story short, disagree with a lot of things. Disagree with a lot of things. Primarily disagree with her joining Monat. And I can see absolutely why people are disappointed people who liked her content, especially people who liked her content and liked following her and she's come out and said and removed all that content and said that it was awful and she was being judgmental and that that's horrible because there's a certain amount of that definitely instills a bit of guilt on people who enjoyed that content. She's very if you hate me leave but there's no like there's no consideration of the grey area in between and I feel like it's important to say don't feel guilty if you enjoyed her content before, don't feel guilty if you still enjoy her content and you are anti-MLM but you still want to watch her, that's totally fine as well. I think there's a gap here, there's a gap here where she hasn't considered her audience's feelings and I think that that's important. I do think, like I said, I think she's very business driven and I think she definitely does have a moral standpoint in terms of business. Like I said, it's in a very different place than mine, but she's definitely, she's definitely committed to talking about bad opportunities and scams and things that you definitely shouldn't do as an MLM rep. I am really interested to see where this goes. 
I'm interested to see how she holds up to the standards she's set herself. I'm interested to see whether she recruits. I'm interested to see what kind of posts she makes. I think, I think it's interesting. Speaking of marketing, social marketing, marketing yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can like this video. You can subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I have a video about MLM experiments, home experiments, that I think is a lot of fun, recorded and ready to edit, and that was going to be my next video. I, I wasn't lying in my last video when I said that that would come next, it's just this came up in between and interrupted my flow. So that is coming very soon, so that'll be exciting. Subscribe so you don't miss that. You can follow me here, you can follow me on Instagram, at Emma and Ashes, all of the links will be in the description anyway. You can also follow me on Twitter at Emma the Goblin. I also have a gaming channel at Little Duck Gaming. You can follow that. I'd, I'd really love to hear your opinion on this, especially if you were a fan of hers, because I think, I just think this is really interesting, and I think the feelings of the fans haven't really been considered. And uh, I want to, I want to see how people are reacting to this. So definitely drop me stuff, send me DMs. I don't care, whatever. Tweet me, internet me at me on the internet uh, if you would like to. <laughs> uh, let me know if there's anything else interesting you think that I should talk about. I hope you are having a very wonderful day, and I will see you very soon.